name is Edgar Allan Poe. I a writer and I lived in the 19th century. I was born in 1809 in Boston. I died mysteriously in Baltimore in 1849. And I did have my issues, uh, so to speak, my emotional issues. I felt intensely, but I was an artist. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been a man. But why will you say that I am mad? Mad men know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. With what caution, with what foresight, with what dissimulation I went to work. Death was something that I was very well acquainted with. I was orphaned. That really affected my outlook in the sense that I learned a sense of loss. I soon lost my foster mother, and of course, years later, uh, may sound a little scandalous to, you, to our modern audiences now, but I did marry my uh, first cousin, Virginia. But I soon lost her as well. Any kind of feeling I was going for was always in the sense of expressing what was beautiful. Remember, I dealt with the loss of so many women that were close to me. So the most poetic topic in the world for me was the death of a beautiful woman. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind of empty, and forget this loss of noir. As I felt the purpose of art was to capture beauty, it was not just to teach moral lessons. A lot of my contemporaries at the time, they thought it should teach a moral lesson as well. I felt like any lesson that was embedded would come out, but the main focus for an artist was the, the creation of beauty. I would reckon that uh, people still, some people, the general public, it still has this idea of me as this tortured genius. And yes, there were, there were definitely many moments that I had where I struggled emotionally, and I definitely had my ups and downs, my conflicts. But um, at the same time, there was more to me than that. There was more to me. You know, I focused a lot on the darker side and of loss, and that's very much a part of me. But it was in fulfillment of my search for beauty and all of my works and to create art. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, evermore.